Let's do some examples about the economic order quant quantity, a.k.a. EOQ. This is from the handout EOQ practice questions. Question number one. Yellow press by slick paper at 1,500 pound rolls. Uh, for textbook printing, annual demand is 2,500 rolls. The cost per roll is 100 bucks, and the annual holding cost is 15% of the cost. Each order costs 50 bucks. If order yellow orders paper rolls in quantities of 100, determine the annual ordering and holding costs. Okay, so essentially we're trying to determine the whole entire cost. So let's start with the with the formula that shows us the cost first. So cost equals to uh, the average cycle inventory times by its holding costs plus um, number of orders that we place times by the cost per order. Okay, so then we get that formula. Uh, the Inventory uh, Management Aid Memoir is very awesome little uh, PDF for this. It's got the formula there listed. Everything's nice and abbreviated. So we have, um, let's see, what do we have? We have order cost of $50. We have annual demand of 2500 Good. We have an order size of 100 Good. Uh, holding cost, 15% of cost. So let's just do the little intermediate calculation for holding costs. 15 Point one five times by eight hundred. La, 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 la. Get about one hundred and twenty dollars on that one. So now we're able to find uh, our annual uh, ordering and holding costs. So costs equals two. Uh, hundred over two times by the one hundred and twenty. Now this will be the annual holding costs. And then plus 2,500 over 100 times by 50. And this will be the annual ordering costs. Together, they will equal to $7,250. Okay. Now figure out each one of those and your biggest screamer clue that uh, we're not at the optimal order size is if these two order, if the holding costs and the ordering costs are much different from each other, that's a good indication that, hey, we'd, we could reduce uh, our costs by changing the order size. And so I leave that up to you to, to just to verify. You'll find that, that uh, it's, an, it's not the case. <laughs> They're not the same. Okay. How many rolls should uh, yellow order at a time in order to minimize costs? That's just a nice, good way to say, hey, what is the EOQ here? Okay, so let's look at B. Well, we want to know the EOQ. We chase down the uh, aid memoir, or we remember, and we have our formula for EOQ. And then we just punch in our numbers, right? Uh, two times the demand of 2,500 figured out the ordering cost of $50, all divided by the $120 holding costs, not forgetting to square root it, and we get 45.64, which is approximately 46 rolls. For EOQ, not a real big deal, whether you round up or round down, the cost curve is relatively flat at the minimum point, but I round it up just to kind of keep with the convention of if it's a 0.5 or higher, I round up. So I, I can keep with normal rounding conventions here. Uh, the question also asks us, what will be the annual ordering and holding costs? And again, we're finding the costs, right? And in this case, uh, I have 46 as my order size divided by 2 times by the 120. And I know that's going to give me my holding costs plus the 2,500 annual demand. That hasn't changed. Divide by 46 and times by the $50. I'm going to get my C here. And C is going to equal to 2760 plus 271739. They're not exactly the same. They're very, very close. They're not exactly the same. The reason for the difference being, remember, I rounded a little bit on the number of rolls. Okay. So that makes means I am putting slightly fewer um, orders out 
so my ordering cost is a little bit lower I'm also maybe holding a little tiny bit more inventory right that little roundy little tiny more inventory so my holding costs are a little bit higher than uh, they would be at the if I, I punched in 45.64 uh, and so I, I get a pretty close a good you know a pretty uh, decent cost 54 77.39 Okay, that's my minimum cost. Much less than what we had before, right? Much, much, much less. What else do we have? Average time between orders. Okay, that's a fancy word for TBO. Give me a T, give me a B, give me O, TBO. Right, and I, and I look at my formula sheet, and that's just the economic order quantity divided by annual demand. By economic order quantity, I mean that's how much we place the actual order for. So 46 units, right? Make sure it's rounded, divided by 2,500. And that gets us 0 0.0184 years. Nobody talks like that, however. Um, so let's express it in terms of days and multiply by 365. And so we get 6.716 days. Okay, know your conversions. How many months in a year? How many days in a year? How many weeks in a year? That kind of good stuff, okay? So almost a week, okay, between orders. So it's not it's not too bad, right? It, it's a little, the, the formulas itself, so make sure you can see that. The formulas itself are, are pretty, uh, are pretty regular and they, 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 they make sense. They're not super complicated. Okay, conceptually, sometimes that's where the tricks will come. What if there's a change in this? What if there's a change in that? What if uh, warehouse space goes up? What was going to happen to all these numbers? That's something that you're going to want to uh, flow, be able to flow through. Number two, number two, number two, number two. If a company implements a new computer system whereby the fixed cost to place an order from a supplier is greatly reduced, what should happen to their order quantities? Order quantities, that's all their EOQ stuff, right? So what happens? S goes down, right? Value in the numerator goes down. What happens to the overall number? It also goes down. So if the cost to place an order goes down, we're going to place uh, smaller orders, uh, just more of them. Remember, demand not impacted here by the cost of, of making an order. So if we're, make, if we're sending out smaller orders, we're doing it more often. If the price of placing an order goes down, we would naturally expect more orders to be placed, right? It's just our, our standard downward sloping demand curve from good old Econ 101. No big surprise there. S, now these are important. Units are key because this is where mistakes occur. Okay, so getting the units mixed up, that's a big source of bad, bad boo-boos. Okay? So S is the ordering cost per setup. What uh, units are S in? S is like a fixed cost. So it would be B per order. I guess that's not really a fixed cost. I mean, it doesn't vary by unit when I say by, by fixed cost. Okay? So per... I guess I'm trying to be fancy here. Uh, per order. Okay, so make sure that, that that's important. Okay. Uh, H is the holding rate. They multiply by the average inventory to get the annual holding cost. What are units are H in? Now, H does vary by the number of units. It's per unit per year. Annual numbers. Remember, demand is in annual numbers. Uh, so we can keep because H is a rate. Uh, the per unit over what time period? Per year. Okay, two more questions to go. What is the purpose of the economic order quantity model? A, to recommend the best order quantity in consideration of the trade-off between order and holding costs. B, recommend the best order quantity in consideration of the probability of stocking out. Uh, C, to recommend the best order quantity in consideration of the lead time to get an order. Now we're all starting to sweat and think. But this is this is where the formula is so important. That formula, two times annual demand times cost of place in order divided by the 
holding cost per unit per year, all square rooted. If I look at that formula, I go, hmm. Now there's the relationships that form what drives EOQ. What's in there? Ordering costs in there? Yeah. Holding costs in there? Yeah. Ooh, A is in play. Let's go continue on. B, probability. Hmm. Mm, do, do you see a probability in there? I don't see a probability in there. Are you sure you don't see a probability? No. Well, no probability there. Nothing to do with stock out here. So, no. Probability of stocking out, not a consideration when we set the order size. C, to recommend the best order quantity in consideration of the lead time to get an order. Hmm, L, lead time, L. Is there an L in there? L, any, L, anywhere, anywhere, anywhere? L, L, are you there? Hey, L, L, no L, no lead time here. Right? Doesn't matter. Economic order quantity is all driven by demand. And then the relationship between ordering costs and holding costs to set the size of that particular order. That's it. It's a matter about prob you know, probability of uh, stock outs during lead times or any of that kind of stuff. Nope. Not in there at all. So the lead sends us over to uh, question number six, true or false. If the lead time is three weeks, then EOQ must be at least enough to meet three weeks of demand. Ah, there's no lead time in the formula. Ah, oh, that these guys, they weren't even listening to me. I just said the lead time doesn't matter, the EOQ, and then we got this goofy question coming up. No, it doesn't matter. EOQ is set to meet regular demand. Regular demand over the year. Not regular demand only during the lead time. That's what, that's, we, we got a different calculation for that, depending on whether it's a continuous review or a periodic review issue. We got different formulas that worry about that stuff, right? And, and, re and really, this kind of depends on other things. It depends on average demand uh, during that week. It depends on our you know, cycle service levels and safety stock and all that good stuff. EOQ's got nothing to do with that stuff. No. So we would say false. We would say a definitive false. I tell you, false. All right. That's this one.